All right, y'all. It's a new month, and with that, new features and tools have come to Fusion 360. The power of having our tools cloud-based is that we give you the latest and greatest on a rolling basis. So let's break it down. Now, I went back and forth on whether to save the best for last or hit you with the goods up front. And, well, I'm going to hit you with the goods. I'd like to introduce you to Cylindrify. The Cylindrify command forms uneven T-spline geometry into a smooth cylindrical shape. This is especially useful to smooth uneven struts or holes from generative design results or, for you industrial designers, when you've been freeform modeling and you want to make something a bit more refined. To use it, in the Modify drop-down, navigate to Cylindrify, select the section you want to smooth, and hit OK. I don't know how else to say it other than, whoa dang, that's rad. Next up, in the surface modeling space, the extend command now has a new edge alignment option that lets you select between free edges or align edges. Free edges will behave as before, where the edges of that surface will extend in the direction of the manipulator. When you're refining your model and you want to have an edge of a surface extend with the same geometric continuity, use the align options to maintain those predefined characteristics. You should know that at Fusion 360, we're all about efficiency gains, so this one should fit right in. Now, when you use the mirror command, join for solid bodies and stitch for surface models are now available as options to use in the operation drop-down menu. This should help reduce extra steps in your modeling workflow. Another new feature for anyone who conducts FEA studies in third-party programs is you can now export T-spline bodies as an IGA. IGA stands for Isogeometric Analysis. This open format allows third-party applications to perform analysis directly on data exported from Fusion 360. Now, when you use the as built joint command to join components together, you'll notice that we've also added modes like join origin, between two faces, as well as two edge intersection, just like what you'll find in the regular joint command. Now you can easily choose which mode you want to use, making it more discoverable and easier to learn. If you've been curious how generative design can impact your workflow, now is the time to try. In June, we released our generative design extension, and now we're giving you seven days to play through our free trial. This is available in the Extension Manager under the Access Options drop-down. For real, if you're curious, give it a go. Whether you're on the new 7-day trial or are a Generative Design Extension customer, give our latest self-paced learning content a spin. Here, we go into the ins and outs on deploying generative design to the fullest extent. It's a great resource for beginners to experts. For anyone leveraging 3D printing and generative design in their workflow, we're pleased to tell you that you now have more control over orientations to better suit your additive needs. You can now generate negative orientation outcomes without having to change the model orientation. Choose the orientation you wish in the manufacturing control box. Another improvement to the generative design manufacturing space is minimum wall thickness. Before you run your study, when you're setting up your manufacturing method in 2D, change the minimum wall thickness to ensure you have a viable study that is manufacturable and applicable to your capabilities. Any of you in the business of making things know that we have to document our needs to make things well, and one of the most powerful tools in making things is drawings. That's why we're putting a lot of effort into our drawing space. And this month, we've got two changes that give you a couple of tools to help streamline your process. Sometimes you have to make changes to title blocks after they've been created. And now there's an easier way to do that. After you've located your title block in the sheet settings section of the browser, hovering over it with your cursor will reveal a change title block button. Click it and you'll be able to select the title block you'd like to rename or delete. We've consistently heard from you that the drawing environment just feels a little different from the rest of Fusion 360 and we're working hard to improve the experience. Over the past few product updates, you may have noticed that we've kept up with the momentum in delivering new features and significant improvements to the drawings workspace. We're continuing this momentum by improving on the experience of creating projected and section views. Now, when you place a projected view or section view, you'll get the green check mark or undo button next to your cursor, making it familiar and consistent with your design workflows. Like I just mentioned, we're focused on making the drawing space as powerful as we can. And to back that up, stay tuned for the October update when we drop some major functionality that I think will have you hooting and hollering with how excited you are. All right, that's all I've got for the September release. Hopefully these new features, updates, and efficiency gains take the hitch out of your giddy up when using Fusion 360. Oh, 
Don't forget to check out the updates in the manufacturing and electronics space. And to stay up to date on what's new, webinars, and other great content, don't forget to subscribe.